2022 has been an interesting tuna season so far. High prices and lack of an early season bite had many folks slow to make it to the grounds, myself included. But now the bite is hot and the yellowfin are responding well to the jig and pop game. So we have some footage for you as well as some tips and tricks for jigging for New Jersey yellowfin tuna. After a month of sea bass fishing, it was nice to get back out offshore, and Colin and I were able to take advantage of a very crowded yellowfin jig bite in some of the dirtiest water I've ever caught yellowfin in. Hey Sean, Mike, any luck? While it was very crowded and a tough bite, we picked a couple fish out of the fleet and considered that a success for a morning trip. Our next trip was a pretty fun one because it was just me and my fiance Casey. We decided that the weather was too good to pass up, so we left the dock around 10 a.m. in the morning and flew out on flat seas to about the 50 mile mark on a 30 fathom curve. We found tons of tuna chicks, whales, and other life and immediately started getting into yellowfin on the jig. Then what you can do is get the big gap, which is on the right side. This one? Yeah. I'm gonna hand you the rod. Yes. After getting word about a bite a little bit closer in, we decided we would check it out on our ride home. And sure enough, there was a pretty good yellowfin bite going on, on the 20 fathom line. Okay, 
you want me to switch out so you can gas? This was exciting because this was Casey's first fish that she hooked on the jig and landed by herself. By the end of July, a pretty good topwater and jig bite on large model yellowfin had developed out between the 30 and 40 fathom lines. I got Tom, Colin, and Casey signed up, and we decided to head out a little later than normal, around 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning. The red hot bite of a few days prior had slowed down to a struggle. Without much life around, we started the hunt and found a few small pods of porpoise milling around. Now while the porpoise are very skittish, as long as you could get good casts into them, you often were rewarded with large yellowfin coming up and eating poppers. Wow, it is right here. Tuna in the porpoise. Probably. Yes. <laughs> a nice size tuna. Yeah.
wasn't for you, we'd never catch anything. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, that's a fucking None of us are. <laughs> I've sat next to you the whole entire day, shoulder to shoulder.
So for as tough of a bite as it was, we were very fortunate to put a couple nice fish in the boat, all as you saw on white mad mantis poppers. So lately, the way the bite's been, it's been mostly a jig bite. So I figured I would show you with some of the tackle that we're using is I get a lot of questions as to, you know, what are you catching things on? You know, what are you using for more of the light tackle things? So I've shown you some of the popping stuff before. Obviously for our trolling gear, we're big sterling tackle people. But when it comes to jigging, I'll show you some of the equipment that we use. So this is my go-to jigging rod for fish basically 100 pounds and under. I mean, these rods are good, but you don't want to be undergunned. So this is a custom black hole 250 gram spinning jigging rod uh, built by Hail Mary Custom Rods and Gaffs out of uh, Brielle, New Jersey. I have it paired with a Shimano Twin Power 8000. So this is a 8000 sized reel it is spooled with 50 pound Daiwa J braid. And what I'm using is I build my own wind ons. You could also do a FG knot or whatever else, but this is 60 pound Yozuri fluorocarbon. Uh, you could use 80 pound, um, you know, with the speed jigging bite, the, the, the lighter leader doesn't seem to matter as much. I like 60 pound just because I think it gets us. Um, more bites But so this is a very good setup again. This is custom very lightweight very easy on the body when you're jigging it Another more non-custom route which I have another setup here. This is a centaur constellation These are relatively inexpensive rods. They're really nice. They have a very parabolic blank. They're extremely lightweight I have caught fish over a hundred pounds on this exact setup that looks like uh, basically like a toy um, this has a 10,000 twin power on it. This has hollow core braid. Typically you use solid core braid for jigging because the hollow core has a tendency to scope out a bit more. Uh, but this reel just happened to has hollow core on it. Another custom wind on 60 pound. So I'm going to go over some of the rigging that I use for my jigs. You can use the stock rigging, but I'm going to show you why I don't. Here is out of here. A stock Nomad Streaker. Now this is a hot color. We've had a lot of success with this color and this size, 120 gram. You could fish it well on one of these speed jigging rods. I think they've actually lengthened these a little bit, but you can see the assist cord and the assist hook that comes with it. You always want to have the gap of your assist hook wider than the hook. Because if it's narrower, it could get stuck on here, you'll get a bite and you won't actually hook the fish. So this is a stock rigging. Again, it's fine. Plenty of people catch tons of fish on the stock rigging and the Nomads. I rig them custom. So we have a nice high quality jigging swivel on there. Get these at Salty Water Tackle. And I tie my own assist cords. So here is a much larger gap hook. Much wider gap, don't have to worry about that ever hanging up on the jig. And I tie longer assist cord on it, so you don't get as many short bites. You have this hanging here, that fish comes and whacks it from below, it's going to get hooked, just like I hooked my hand. Very sharp hooks. So, you basically want to tie your assist cord so that your hook is somewhere in the middle to right around, you know, lower three quarters of that jig just to avoid any short strikes and that's why I'll have and the other thing I like to do is I'll put these little teaser squids on there it just gives it a little bit of flash a little bit of something extra when you're down there jigging that'll help entice the bite when there's a hundred boats in the fleet and they're all jigging with the same jigs the same nomad streakers everyone's using these will kind of give you a little bit of an advantage and give something that looks a little bit different. In terms of jigs that we're using, obviously as you could see, this one's beat up. I've straightened it back out on a bench from being eaten so many times. I love the 120 gram pink glow 
streaker jig. Another great options here. These are the Mad Mantis jigs. Make some great jigs, inexpensive. These are a little bit heavier, work better in a good current. They still have that good sand deal profile. Obviously these would work great. Their fish are feeding on larger sand deals. When the fish are keyed in on smaller sand deals. The F1, CB1 F1 jigs. You can get them up at Sammy's shop, Salty Water Tackle. These work very well as well. You can see, beat up from catching fish. In the same vein, I've also caught fish on the Mustad Moonriser jigs. Again, glow belly, pink back. For whatever reason, pink always seems to work very well. Of course, standby. Ron Z, the pink worm. These suckers, you could leave this in a rod holder, it'll get bit. So again, a lot of different options that you could use for catching these fish when they're on the jig. You could jig slowly, you could jig fast. With these style speed jigs, we jig tend to jig pretty quickly. Um, you know, it's, a, it's all about technique. You don't have to be the best at it, just so long as you have a, hooks in the water. You can't catch them if you don't have a hook in the water. So, you know, look for those tuna chicks, look for the rays, look for the bait, read the fish, drop a jig down on their head. Usually you're going to get bit.